Hello, it's Helder here, and today I'm going to share some tips with you on how I keep my everyday carry folding knife sharp and prepared for a self-defense encounter. I'm also going to share some tips with you on a couple movements uh, to keep in mind and thought processes to keep in mind if you are unfortunate enough to encounter a self-defense scenario where you would need to apply self-defense. So let's get started. So first thing I want to address is when you do carry a knife, especially for self-defense, but pretty much for any scenario, you don't want a dull knife. You want it to be as sharp as possible. A uh, dull knife is actually a very dangerous knife. So one of the ways that I address that is by using my Wicked Edge Sharpener to keep all of my blades nice and sharp, and especially anything that I would use or consider for self-defense. Now, like most everyday carry knives, even though I might keep this in my pocket on a daily use for self-defense scenarios, something always comes up where you need your pocket knife. And even though it might have been razor sharp beforehand, I'll end up using it to uh, cut up some meat or whittle something while I'm in a field or whatever. And of course, it's going to lose that sharpness that it has. And the way to combat that is to resharpen it using my Wicked Edge Sharpener. Now, the fact that, once again, this doesn't get too dull, I'm not putting it up into extreme camp use or anything like that. So, what I'm going to use here is my Wicked Edge Sharpener. And the grits that I'm going to use are relatively high because I don't need to do too much work on this blade. So, I'm going to start with the 1500 grit, work my way to 2200, and then finish off with the... 3000 grit. As far as the sharpening process in this video, I'm kind of just going to go through it quickly because I have other videos if you are interested in seeing more in depth uh, detail on the sharpening process with the Wicked Edge Sharpener. I'll link those videos in the top right now, so be sure to check them out. And what I will do is try to share some more insight on uh, just thoughts that you should have in your head when it applies to self-defense as I go ahead and put a razor sharp edge on my blade. So let's get started. All right, so I found my angle, utilizing my Sharpie, set the angles, got them ready to go on both sides, and all I gotta do now is start sharpening. One thing to keep in mind is you need to know what type of knife you're even able to carry, depending on your location. It varies, of course, from country to country, state to state, and even city to city. So first rule is make sure that you're allowed to carry the everyday knife, whether it's a folder, whether it's a fixed blade, just know what is legal before you even attempt to carry something for self-defense or for any reason. Make sure you wipe down your stones, prevent contamination. As I mentioned, I'm going to give you a couple tips that'll help you with self-defense, but keep in mind this isn't going to make you a martial artist or, uh, you know, some kind of uh, incredible knife-wielding person. It's just something that'll hopefully get you out of the sticky situation, and whether it's you, whether it's you and your family, just something that'll help in a self-defense situation. So make sure you do your homework and find out what is legal before you go and carry something that might get you in a lot of trouble. Okay, so now that we have our nice, super sharp self-defense knife, I want to go over just a couple scenarios or a couple thought processes that you should have in your head that'll hopefully help you to bode well and survive a self-defense scenario. Okay, so now when you are practicing and getting ready or getting your attributes built up for any type of self-defense application, definitely use a training blade. This one here is made of rubber. It's not going to hurt me. It's not going to hurt anybody that's near me. And that way, as you are developing these attributes, you don't go ahead and hurt yourself or somebody else that might be in that vicinity. So two main grips when we are dealing with a knife. One would be your forward grip and the other would be your reverse grip. So when you have the tip down and the forward grip, you have the tip up. For the purpose of this demonstration, we're only going to be talking about the forward grip. So what I want you to think about is just grabbing the knife, having it a nice firm grip, not over tightening it. Okay, but just firm enough where you're able to retain it. 
Uh, as far as the thumb here, keep it out of the way, keep it tucked. You don't want to coming into contact with anything and end up cutting your thumb off and injuring yourself uh, before you could even get out of this uh, self-defense situation. Now to make things easier when conveying this information, we're going to talk in angles, okay? So we're going to use two specific angles today, angle one and angle two. And now what I want you to think about while you're in that forward grip is to make a V, okay? So think of the shape of a V, of the letter V, and this would be angle one coming down on this V. And then you would come back on the other side, angle two. So one side of the V, two side of the V. So angle one and angle two. Angle one and angle two. So to further demonstrate the angle one and angle two, I have Bob here. And Bob is nice and protected and suited up. So he's not going to get hurt, especially with my rubber knife. Now what I want you to think about here is still that same grip that we spoke about, that forward grip. And we're thinking about making the V and using Bob here to even make it easier to visualize. So I'm thinking about that V. So we have that angle one coming here, angle two, angle one, angle two, angle one, and angle two. So just thinking about really practicing that angle and I'm extending my arm, extending it further, of course, trying to keep that person that's trying to do me harm as far away as possible. And remember, I'm back here so I'm trying to keep him here, clear as much space as possible so that I could get myself and possibly anybody else that I'm with behind me out of the, the scenario, especially being able to run, being able to get to help, being able to make some noise so that this person that's trying to do me harm thinks twice and hopefully goes the other way so that I could get out of this scenario safely. Remember, angle one, angle two, angle one, angle two. As you start becoming very comfortable with this, you're going to want those wider, wider angles, wider strokes, and even faster. So that if you're here and you're screaming at this person, get away from me, get away from me, get away from me, you're basically turning into a fan. If that person or if Bob comes forward, he's going to get cut in this fan that I've created with these angle ones and angle twos. So I don't think Bob wants to come anywhere near to this scenario. It would be similar to taking your finger and poking it in a fan as those blades are spinning around. Nobody wants to do that, correct? Well, that's what this person is going to be thinking. So by you sitting here just with your angle one, angle two, think about turning into a fan. You're going to hopefully create that space where you're going to be able to go the other way and get out of there. And if Bob decides to put his hand or anything else into your fan, he's most likely going to regret that. And once he does regret that and deals with the issue of sticking his finger in the fan, you'll also be able to get out of there, get to safety, be able to call 911, and hopefully make other people in the area aware of what is going on so that you can get home safely. And one, two, one, two, one, two, become a fan. So bottom line, two main reasons for me sharing this information with you. One was to convey had the importance of having a very sharp knife, especially if you're turning into a fan. You want anything that this blade comes in contact with to make the person that's trying to do you harm think twice and hopefully go the other way so that you could get to safety. And of course, sharing a little bit of information on applying self-defense. Now keep in mind, it was very brief, very simple, but hopefully inspire you just a bit to get started with your self-defense training, gather as much information, and of course, practice, 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 because it never, never will go as smoothly out in a real scenario as it will in training. So remember, perfect practice makes perfect.